Hey guys, welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Resolve. As you can see, we are about to talk to Lord Van Zeeks. In the last episode, we had a look around at the uh, investigation site. And now we are here and we are supposed to talk to him. Which we are going to do, of course. So, let's get going. Let's talk about his brother Clint. So, Clint was the name of your older brother, I understand, Lord Van Ziegs? You Nipponese, I always have to be on guard whenever you're around. So you've been investigating me, have you? Oh, no, no, it's not like that. Well, alright, it is a bit like that. My older brother was also a prosecutor. He was the pride of the Von Zeeg's family. But tragically, a wishes killer took him from us. The professor, you mean? <laughs> Is something funny? That's the extent of what you've discovered, is it? I shouldn't be surprised. Sorry? There's more to it then. Lackluster work is very much your trademark, isn't it? Uh, you're too kind. Are you going to tar all Nipponese with the same brush next? So tell me, what's your interest in that historic incident? As it happens, Lord Van Zeeks, there's a rather curious case that's come to our attention. Are you aware of the Madame Tuspel's Museum of Waxwork by any chance? I am, naturally. I believe that since last month, I featured in one of the displays there for public score. Of course, the infamous Reaper of Bailey would have been to be exhibited, wouldn't he? Well, a particular waxwork has been stolen from the place and held for a ransom. A particular waxwork? Which... Wait, you mean? Yes, it's the Professor. Mr. Sholmes is investigating the case as we speak. I... was unaware of that. He's turned as white as a sheet. Hmm, well, time to talk about Enoch Drebber then. Are the police trying to locate the engineer, Mr. Drebber, already? Surely that goes without saying. We're very keen to see him found as well. The trouble is, we don't have much to go on aside from the description of the man we heard in court earlier. Which, according to Professor Habrain, was of a tall, thin gentleman who has straight hair, white, straight white hair, and wears a black monocle. So, I was just wondering, I mean, I realize it's probably not possible, but, um... We'd very much appreciate any more clues you can give us. Wow, such a son really knows how to take the bull by the horns. Fine. Why not? I have a photograph of the man here from an investigation ten years ago. Hmm. Although it appears he already had that black monocle at the time. What? Oh, no, nothing. I, I was just surprised that you shared that with us. We all need a man's testimony in court tomorrow. Which means we have to do everything we possibly can to track him down in the short time available. So why won't I show you the photograph? What is it about Lord Van Zeeks? Sometimes it just can't work him out at all. 
The photograph of Drebber has been entered into the court record. Photograph of Drebber. A photographic print of the engineer, Mr. Enoch Drebber. It's hard to make out, but he appears to be wearing a monocle, monocle with black glass. for the trial tomorrow. Thank you. Are you all right? Who, who is this man, Mr. Naruto? Lord Van Zeeks' apprentice, apparently. So I'm not the only one. So Sato-san can see it too. Um, Lord Van Zeeks, may we speak with your apprentice for a moment? With him? Why? Kazuma-sama! Ma? I don't believe it. Your your posture, your presence. It can only be. It's you, isn't it, Kazuma Sama? I felt something strange the very first time I encountered this cloaked figure. As if I knew him somehow. Can it can it really be you? Kazuma? Whoa, wait! Too late. What's going on here? Your apprentice. We are going to talk about him for sure. What is your interest in my apprentice exactly? You act as if you know the man or something. Well, um... Since when he has been in your care? I don't recall you having an apprentice before I left Britain six months ago. Lord Strongheart introduced him to me about three months ago now. With instructions to mentor him as a prosecutor. But he didn't tell you why, did he? The man appears to be suffering from amnesia. He's forgotten every least, every last detail about himself. He has amnesia? Tomorrow he will appear in court at my side. What? He's to serve as my judicial assistant on Lord Strongheart's orders. He'll be in court with us? Now then, unless I'm much mistaken, I believe this conversation has run its course. Oh, yes, um, thank you. I definitely saw a reaction there. When Susatu-san called out like that, it really seemed to hit a nerve. When she called out, Kazuma-sama. You'd already met that masked man, hadn't you, Mr. Naruto? Yes, yesterday, in fact, at Lord Von Zeeks's office. I see. And if, if Kazuma-sama really is still alive, it means that Mr. Shorms lied to us. I know. We're going to need to speak to him about that. You're going to have to leave now. The forensic investigation team are due to arrive shortly. If they find you here, it will cause problems. What sort of problems? Foreign affairs problems. Well, we could do without that. Alright, we'll be on our way. Let's go, Mr. Sato. Of course.
Well, can we go back up? Is that possible? We better not try going up those stairs to the stage area. If we were to bump into the forensic investigation team, it sounds like it could make trouble. Well, we can't apparently. Alright, so it's time to move then. Next on, we could go to the forensics labo laboratory, but we are going to Madame Tuspelt's first. Because I have a st uh, strong feeling that we are going to encounter Mr. Sean. 23rd October, Madame Tuspelt's. Oh my! No wonder it's called the House of Horrors. I'd like to turn on my heels and go straight home. Why the confectionery? Being scared makes you crave sweets? I can understand that. I was looking forward to a reunion after six months away, but... There's no sign of Mr. Shorms anywhere. That's strange. He should be here investigating the abduction of the waxwork. Oh well, I suppose we'll just have to come back again later. Well, if we're here already though... We are going to have a look at everything, of course. Oh, what a horrifying scene! A murderer caught in the grisly act! I know, and in case you were wondering, it's the one with the big knife that's supposed to be the killer. I don't think anybody would be in any doubt about that, surely? And did you know that according to the description, the bathtub at the back has no particular significance? What? Really? I would have I would have thought it was meant to show that the killer also worked in a bathhouse peddling criminal ways. Aha! We have a new theory. Little unfortunate. Okay, nothing else here. What about the curtain? Ah uh, yes, the heavy curtains in the middle of the house of horrors. Whatever's on the other side of them, you just know it's going to be terrifying, don't you? The sign says it's the Madame Tuspel special exhibit. Uh, exhibit. It seems you have to pay extra to go inside. I know. Uh, can you believe that? Pay more money as if we haven't been scared enough already. It's not my doing, Mr. Narodor. Well. Okay, let's have a look at this figure. That old policeman isn't here now, obviously. I still can't believe he just happened to be on the jury, though. I... I don't understand that London has a population of 6 million people, and yet... You do seem to run into the same people disproportionately often, don't you? <laughs> well, that's a nice... Uh, little touch upon how the game works, because there are just some... Uh, some things that they just actually can draw and they are going to come up over and over and over again that that figures all right oh there's a step letter there look oh yes a step letter i think perhaps we should let the pro proprietress know that someone's left it out the step that i mean is something wrong why do I feel as though I just managed to sidestep an argument? So... Oh, we got an achievement for that! The top rung! Okay, good thing we did that, because we got an achievement for that. If you haven't watched that episode, at some point I do explain how Ace Attorney has a running gag between Maya and Phoenix about the letter and step letter argument. And it's just a running gag, so... Maybe you just want to look it up on Google, or you might go back and have a look at the first day of the investigation where I explain it. This one's posture reveals his weakness. Sorry? The killer stands leaves him wide open to attack. I'm quite sure I could see him off. With? With a Sasato takedown, then a Sasato squash, and finally a Sasato smash. R right And if that doesn't render the carpet unconscious, a Sasato slam should finish him. A, a Sasato slam? Oh, I'm sorry, it's it's rather hard to explain. Leave yourself open slightly, and I'll demonstrate. Uh, absolutely not! Okay, good thing we got that. Alright, time to move then. So, next on the menu, Forensics Laboratory! Oh. Alright, 23rd October, Forensics Laboratory. I believe this is it, Dr. Scythe's laboratory. The chemical smell really assaults the nerves, and there's plenty to assault the eye in here too. 
It looks as though the doctor isn't here. But we're here now, so we may as well do some sightseeing, don't you think? What a seasoned tourist you've become, Mr. Sato. We could just have a little look around, being careful not to upset any restless souls. Well, time to look around then. Let's see, what do we have up here? Those large jars seem to have pale things floating around inside them. I suppose they're fruit liquors or something. Or like the pickled m umeboshi plums we m make back home. Ah, father had jars like that in his laboratory as well. I expect they're human organs in a preserving solution. Probably as examples of some rare medical condition. Mr. Sato, there are some things in the world that it's perfectly fine never to know about. Ever. Oh! So as I said, I'm sure they're fruit liquors or umeboshi, aren't they? Of, of course. <laughs> Alright, so let's have a look at the instruments. A table and a set of sharp tools. When you consider each in isolation, it all looks quite innocent. So why is it that when you put them side by side, they seem so horribly disturbing? It might be best not to ponder it too deeply. Seeing the large tome that's open on the desk does make me wonder, though. How can Eddie be concentrated on bookwork with this accurate order of chemicals in the air? You'd either have to have a cast iron constitution, or a really terrible sense of smell. <laughs> True. Okay, oh, we can check out these. Let's do that. Look at all those bottles on the shelves in this cabinet. Uh, cabinets, what an assortment of chemicals. These ones here are labeled highly toxic. Uh, that's worrying, because there are also things that look like salt and pepper shakers in there. Oh yes, and they actually say salt and pepper on them. The doctor probably spends a lot of time in this room, I suppose. Perhaps she has a meal here sometimes. Life goes on, even when you're surrounded by death. <laughs> okay, alright. So, we could have a look. Oh, let's have a look at the owl. That looks like an owl and a crow up there. I know, and they haven't even twitched since we came in here. Well, no, they wouldn't have. They're taxidermy mounts, Mr. Naruhudo. Uh, I was afraid you were going to say that. I've been trying to very hard to tell myself they're just sleeping with their eyes open. Yes. I think perhaps you would wise to put something like your Durham doll on display in the office instead. Oh, that reminds me of Psycho because uh, the murderer of Psycho is actually uh, has taxidermy as a uh, as a hobby. Well, look at this! What a magnificent display case! The cherry wood has been polished to a high sheen, and the intricate carving is a joy to behold. Best and cabinet makers really are very skilled, aren't they? Do you have nothing to say about the skeleton inside, Mr. Naruhodo? Mr. Sato, can't you tell that I'm trying very hard to avoid talking about the terrifying contents of the cave? It's how I cope! I'll be sure to remember that from now on. Uh-huh, okay. Nothing of interest here. We had a look here. We had a look there. Uh, I'm just sorry. I know that the tome is to be inspected, but I just want to be thorough and I like to leave the good meat for last. And we are going to have a look at the tome right away. I suppose this is Dr. Scythus' deck. Uh, I would not like to work in a place like this. It's very tidy though, isn't it, Mr. Naruto? Imagine how efficiently she must work. The lighting is poor, which is bad for the eyes, and the chemical smell can't be good for you. Not to mention the skeleton watching over you as you work, which is definitely bad for the nerves. Well, yes, those are our world concerns, I suppose. I can just about cope with one-eyed Daruma doll watching over me, but that's all. Alright, we had a look at the cabinets too, so that means we only have the tome left. And we are going to have a look at the tome. Look at this big thick book here. Oh, it appears to be an accounting ledger. It's a record of the forensic investigation team's spending, I think. Oh. What is it? It's clear.
appear that the team purchases various equipment and supplies on a monthly basis, but... Well, one entry seems rather strange. Really? In what way? They're buying 500 scalpels every month. But 500? They must be working really hard on the dissecting courses. I don't know. Judicial autopsies are only carried out in certain special circumstances. And scalpel bl blades can be sharpened too. It, it does seem a bit strange. You're right. 500 scalpels a month. What could they possibly be using all them for? What are you doing? Oh. Sorry, we um had something we wanted to ask you, but you weren't here, so... So you thought you'd snoop around? That's acceptable to you people from the East, is it? Well, what do you want? Uh, um, Lord Strongheart told us, you see, that it was you who examined the victim's body. Um, Mr. Asmund's body, I mean. So we came to ask about your findings, on Lord Strongheart's advice. Very well. If the Lord Chief Justice has given this consent, I'll tell you what your, our investigation revealed. But when we're done, you must leave immediately. Alright. Okay, we examined already. We're just gonna converse straight away. Oh, although... I'm gonna present some stuff to her first. We do have time. Dr. Scythe, would you be good enough to take a look at this? Oh, you think I'm good enough, do you? Ah, oh, no, 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 I don't mean... So I'm not good enough. In that case, why would you show me anything? Ah, uh, clearly you're too good for me to show you anything again, ever. Okay, so she is pretty. I'm going to try to simulate that in the voice somehow. Just have to think of something. And she does seem like she is very well pictured as a corona. Okay, so there is no point in showing her anything, although we could maybe try the autopsy report. Dr. Scythe, would you be good enough? Okay, no, you don't have to say anything about that either. Okay. Uh, maybe the photograph, though? Okay, nothing about that either. So maybe... Maybe she knows something about Drebber. No, she doesn't. What about the wooden birdcage, maybe? You're a doctor? Okay, nothing about that either. Okay, cool. So, sorry for wasting your time, guys. <laughs> okay, let's converse then. Your findings. So, you want to know what the forensic investigation team determined from its examination of the scene? The victim, Mr. Odai Asman. Oh, maybe it's Mr. Odious Man? Odi Odious Man? Odious Man? Maybe something like that. Hmm. Who disappeared from the experimentation stage amid an explosion. And the Mr. And then the Mr. Asman who appeared moments later part away, a part way up the Crystal Tower were without question one and the same person. That is the team's conclusion. But, but that can't be right. If it was an elaborate trick, we can only speculate about how it was carried out. Let's see, if two people who looked very similar to each other were involved, they could have made it appear as if one single person had switched places, couldn't they? Very true, but sadly in this instance, that was not the case. The man who disappeared and the man who just subsequently reappeared was the same person. The fingerprints at the scene make, the, make, make that quite evident. Ah, oh, fingerprints. They're not yet officially recognized as forensic evidence in the British justice system. But one day, they will be used as an investigative aid as, as a matter of course. Uh, as a matter of course, sorry. Oh my, but that would mean that the instantaneous crisis actually took place. So, where does that leave us? My team was tasked with investigating, not drawing conclusions. Instantaneous kinesis is impossible. 
and, the, and yet the body did move from one place to the other. This hasn't cleared anything up at all. It's made the whole thing even more of a mystery. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> okay. Mama, what is this? Uh, well, where, where did she spring from? And did she just call the doctor Mama? This is a lawyer, dear. Oh! Um, hello. To meet you. P please to meet you. Yes, I'm a defense lawyer. Renault's gonna do. Mama! Yes? Can I cut this one open? What? I've never seen inside an Eastern person before. I want to know what it looks like. Of course you can't. It's a live specimen, as you can very well see. Hmm, boring. I... I think I just had a near-death experience. Oh dear, Mr. Barodo, you're as pale as a corpse. Then let's leave before I'm mistaken for one. Well, I think we've done all the investigating we can, we can here for now. If we could just determine the whereabouts of Mr. Drebber. I'm sure Gina and little Toby won't let us down. Now then, do you think we ought to try to speak with Mr. Shaw's at this point? We have things to discuss, and I'm dying to meet him, uh, meet him again after all these months. Yes, it's quite possible he might know something useful, you're right. We ought to find him at Madame Tuspel's. He's supposed to be working there as a temporary waxwork exhibit. Yes, Iris told me all about his latest unusual venture. Alright, oh, this was a little disturbing, wasn't it, guys? What if we want to talk to him again? So, what are you doing at the moment, Doctor? Keeping a close eye on things so no impertinent Easterners think they can look around my office. Are there such impertinent Easterners around? How terrible! Yes, you! She doesn't mince her words, Mr. Sato. I think perhaps it's time we left. Does seem like it, so if we were to have a look at things... Okay, she wouldn't... Wouldn't trigger any new uh, trigger a new dialogue, so we're just gonna move along. Nothing to see here, guys. We're just gonna move along to Madame Tuspelts. Uh, all right. Okay. Okay. Oh, that was. Okay. Sorry, guys, but after that, in I need a little break here. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I need a little break, and also, we're nearing uh, the half hour mark quite rapidly. So therefore, if you want to know what Mr. Shorms has, uh, what kind of information Mr. Shorms has in stock for us, you'll have to tune in next time for the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Resolve. See you then.